So today, the Stanford High Performance uh, Center and CIQ will provide in-depth training on cluster building and building containers in HPC cloud environments. This includes a great cluster building competition, uh, which we've been talking about the last few days. So hopefully you've signed up. I look forward to seeing those results. With that, let me introduce you to Steve Jones, director of the Stanford High Performance Computing Center at Stanford University to begin. Steve, how are you? You ready? Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, just a quick note. I was trying to start my video. Um, and it says I can't start it because the host has stopped it. Well, seems kind of odd. Anyway, that aside. Um, <laughs> there must be reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, welcome to day three, everyone. Um, um, uh, I'll let uh, you finish up with your slides and all of that. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, having some great discussion over the next um, hour or so. It's all yours, Steve. Oh, it's all mine. Okay, great. It's all um, yours. Perfect. Let me uh, let me share my screen here really quick. Make sure I get the right one up. All right. So. Um, what we're going to be doing today um, is the cluster building competition. So again, I'm Steve Jones, uh, and I'm with the Stanford High Performance Computing Center um, and Pratham um, and possibly Shafin are on the line with me as well. They're two students that, that work in my group. Um, and what we do at the HPC Center, so we're staffed with the exception of myself uh, and some finance um, officers were staffed entirely by undergraduates. Um, so we put out a call for um, employment, if you will, each year and uh, take in just about all the undergraduates that we can and then um, find interesting projects for them to work on throughout the year. Um, excuse my scratchy voice. I've, I've had a cold for a little while here um, and then trying to get over it. Um, so our machines are primarily repurposed from um, national labs or supercomputing centers, um, NCAR, um, DOD um, center in, in uh, Mississippi, uh, other places um, that we've gotten our systems from, and then also donated from, from Intel. Um, a lot of systems come in from Endeavor, their, their large HPC system that, that they have. Um, so they just pack them up, get them ready for shipment and we send over a semi truck and uh, haul them over here and uh, and set them up. Um, so let's see, oh, now I can start my video. Okay, there we go. So, uh, uh, and our work here is to support the university's research mission. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the projects they work on, but uh, our main one that we participate with is the PSAP3 project um, through the Department of Energy, National Nuclear Security Administration, where we have large allocations of time on the um, systems at Livermore, Los Alamos, India, um, to do um, interesting work um, related to turbulence and other types of research. Um, so we also host conferences, workshops, do outreach. Um, uh, most of our work is all with the HPC AI Advisory Council um and it's a relationship that that uh brian and i have shared uh for uh, i think 14 15 years now um and then we have a number of uh clusters that are in production and some of the people that are participating with this uh, cluster competition today will be using some of those um so two of the things that we have in our undergraduate experiential learning program um, one is on new cooling trends for supercomputers. Um, we're looking at new water delivery mechanisms with uh, using um, very hot water um, and also being able to take in high heat um, to systems and uh, remove and uh, just do interesting different types, types of things with them. Um, so we're going to be doing all of the monitoring of systems and sensors and 
gathering that data as, as part of this project. Um, we're also involved in a lot of CI CD work. Um, oh, it looks like my screen is frozen. Brian, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure that that you're still there because it looks like my uh, video froze. Your video froze. I still see the slides. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to stop the video. So um, I'll just continue on here. So we do a lot of CI, CD work. Um, some of this is with the uh, systems over at Livermore, um, where we do, uh, we run CI, CD on those systems. Uh and we run it on our local systems, also Los Alamos, Sandia. Some of these, we send the job results directly back to our GitLab instance um, and call that data and then use Slack as the reporting system. Um, so they're kind of some interesting projects. Uh, they also, the undergraduates get uh, um, opportunities to participate in internships. Um, through the labs or through uh, some other pipelines we have set up with Intel data centers, with NASA and, and other locations. Um, so what we're doing in the competition today, um, the participants are going to do an automated installation of OpenHPC on a rocky Linux master node. So this is physical hardware that, that they're accessing. Uh, they're going to provision the compute node if they choose to do it using our Werewolf 4 recipe um, via container. Um, and that includes configuration of Slurm, IB, uh, and Aptainer. Um, then they're going to be completing a tutorial that goes through the checkout and build of a container from Docker Hub. Um, I think it's Julia that they'll be uh, obtaining the container of and then doing executing some scripts. And at the end of that, they'll notify us, and then we'll look at some timestamps and determine who completed this the fastest. Um, and so you see here, there are a number of different applications we're using there. Rocky, OpenHPC, Werewolf, Aptainer, um, and uh, the servers in this case are donated by, by Intel. Um, so the steps they're going through are just invoking a recipe file that we have. They obtain that from GitHub. Um, I'll share the, the link to that in a minute. Uh, they're power cycling the node on, and then they can tail the log for messages. And check the status of Slurm so they know the compute nodes online. Um, and then they'll be moving on to uh, um, the container portion of it. And so in the container section, um, they'll load a singularity module, um, obtain the container from, from Docker Hub, the Julia container, um, and, and build that on the local system. Then they'll go through and just complete a number of steps here. Like one here is just executing the um, container image and going into it, and then they can exit out of it with a simple thing, control D. Um, and the next step they'll be completing is creating a file using DI or uh, whatever their favorite, you know, Nano, their favorite uh, um, um, interpreter is, and uh, doing a quick Monte Carlo simulation um, of Pi. Then executing that in a few different ways with either the execute option or shell option um, to go and, and do that. Then creating a script, a Slurm script to go and um, send it to the compute node for execution. This will be the last step in their in their tutorial, um, or sorry, in their competition where they send this, and then that will generate an output file that we'll go and use for the, um, uh, you know, timestamp on that, checking to see who completed it the fastest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this share here really quick, and switch over to the um, other one I have here. Give me one second. Let me make sure I've got this done correct. Okay, so this is what they're looking at in the in the um, competition. So 
what I'd like is if in chat, if everyone who is participating in this today, if you can just message me in chat and let me know that you're ready to start the um, competition. I want to make sure everybody's logged on to the um, system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to access another system here just to give everybody an idea of what what they're doing. So I see one person is logged on um, to the intermediary host. That's Paul I have there. Um, I'll wait till I see a few others pop up. And so this is our public facing GitHub site um, where we have in OpenHPC a few recipes um, available here, here and also um, some containers. We have two different recipes um, available. So we have a recipe for Werewolf, which is Werewolf 3. This is based on the production version or production release of OpenHPC. Um, even with the Rocky 8 recipes or, or uh, installation guide that they have, um, it's still using Werewolf 3. Um, we also have a Werewolf 4 um, recipe demonstration, if you will, that is not yet supported through OpenHPC. Um, I've heard that they're going to be re releasing this sometime later this year. Um, but we have one here that works and will allow you to install Werewolf 4 and use containers. Um, all right, so I'm getting some messages in here that, that people are ready. So um, you can go ahead and start your build at any time. You can use either the Werewolf or Werewolf 4. I think we uh, um, stated that in the, in the instructions. Um, so there's no official launch of time. We're going to be looking at timestamps from the time that you execute your checkout of the recipe to the time you do the last step in the um, container. So go ahead and start your, your builds. And what I'll do is I'm going to go and start the Werewolf 4 build. So in here, it's... Uh, oh. If I can get mine working correctly. There we go. Um, it's a longish line to type, so I'm just being lazy here. And, and so as you can see here, it just gives a timestamp when it starts. Um, and what they're what's happened here is it's now just started the the install. So I'll just share a couple of things here really quickly. So in this script, and, and these are available for anyone who wants to go and um, uh, execute this. Um, okay, so I got one question here in the chat. Um, we're not login as root. Yeah, that's correct. You log in to the intermediary host, and then you SSH as root to the um, your cluster. Um, and there is the instructions are in that PDF that we sent to you. So you first connect into the intermediary host, then you connect to your cluster that you were assigned. Um, all right. So, um, so there, uh, some people are going through this one here and doing the install. Um, and what's taking place in the install here is that uh, it's just going through and doing a lot of standard Linux installation um, techniques. And um, the real interesting part is when it gets down to the container build. Um, but I'm going to save a lot of that and let them cover that in the werewolf section later in the, in the next talk. Um, so since this is running, I'm going to switch back to my regular slide deck here. Um, Give me one second.
All right. So if they're if the people who are doing the install right now, um, or if we're just talking about open HPC in general, um, it has tradition, it's been using the virtual node file system um, hierarchy uh, for, for quite some time. And this is provided through, through Werewolf and Werewolf is a uh, utility that provisions compute nodes with an operating system uh, from the master node. Um, so the compute nodes can be stateless, um, which means they don't uh, have an OS that persists between boots. This is how we run all of our, our systems. Um, and in the um, OS, the OS image is a, a VNFS image. Um, and so OpenHPC is the framework that, that I use um, and that's available that allows you to go and integrate all these different um, components and utilities and applications. Um, and essentially OS, uh, OpenHPC sits at the, the top level um, and is just a repository. So there could just be um, certain parts of it, certain components that you use. Um, and I have some examples here just to give you an idea of, of how it works. Um, so if you're having any issues with your build or getting started, um, find in the um, list of pe people, Pratham Humble, um, and he can go and, and chat with you directly and, and give you any direction that, that you need. Um, but I'm assuming that everybody's uh, um, up and running um, on this. Okay, so back to the slides here. So this is present day computing here um, uh, in cluster distribution, is that at least if you're using Werewolf and OpenHPC, is that we're still in this mode of installing the operating system on, on our clusters. We're um, creating these, um, using Chroot and VNFS image, these lo install locations here um, where we have uh, a VNFS image located on the file system and uh, um, in this virtualized environment, uh, now moving towards a container environment. Um, and so in this BNFS image, you have your root file system. Let me see if I can get my pointer working here. Okay. All right, so, so in this BNFS image, we have on the base install on your master node, you have your traditional installation with, you know, slash Etsy, user home, opt. And in opt on o OpenHPC, there will be a subdirectory, in this case, Rocky 8, um, where we have the install location for the compute node. And in this location, we have the, again, the, uh, absolute path, and then the file system that's going to be deployed to the compute nodes. We do all of our installations here, packages. Uh, we use tools like yum and do install root redirection. And the have this concept of the root directory. This is where we would do our install redirection too. Um, so we add all our packages there and then import that location, once we have everything built, we import that into the Werewolf database. And then from the Werewolf database, we assign that to a compute node and, uh, definition and then boot the compute node. And then that image is then installed onto the compute node. And it's a you know pretty simple process, but we've used, been using this process for, for, for decades. Uh, you know, still going through these types of um, VNFS image uh, or hand-built images, uh, getting things out. Then there, there's the concept of updating files where we'll take maybe the password file when we add a user, um, import that into the Werewolf database, and then sync that out to the compute node. Again, through some type of definition that we, that we have. Um, 
And what we're looking for, at least us, is a new way to do this. And where with, with Werewolf 4 and containers, what we're hoping is that like this is the, the solution for us. Um, and of course, stay tuned for the next talk to learn more about that. I don't want to go and share things um, from my very limited end user, you know, admin point of view um, when we have the experts here to share um, all of the um, great talk on it. Um, there were some things in the discussion yesterday um, that, that I kind of wanted to talk about. Uh, and what I'd like to do is, uh, give me just one second. Um, in this, let's see. Uh, oh, I was hoping Joe was on here. Um, I was going to include him in the conversation. Um, but it looks like Joe may have dropped off. Uh, but if any of the panelists, uh, Jonathan, David, feel free to jump in on, on this section here. Um, because I want to go through some of the slides that we have from yesterday and just... Um, have some discussion about this. Um, so Greg Kurtzer from Control IQ had shared some slides yesterday, um, and we're looking at the current system usage uh, of, of an HPC cluster. So even with the competition that's taking place today, um, this is basically what people are doing. You, you go and have your terminal clients, SSH into some type of node. In this case, they're connecting into a login node on a cluster that we have. Um, you want to go and get a good understanding of, of the system and storage configuration and compilers and all these types of things. You need to go and download source code, then compile that code. Um, then maybe recompile because you might not have linked against the correct libraries or correct compilers, or maybe you're compiling against a serial version of something and not a parallel version or um, some other type of issue. So there's a number of iterations that maybe take place in this number four. Uh, then you'll need to get your, your data um, onto the system. Um, and maybe there are policies or quotas or things like that to deal with. Um, then you go through a number of profile and test um, of your application before you can even get to the point of going and figuring out how to submit your job to the queue and get it to execute. Um, so let's say up to seven here, you know, you could be a week into your work because maybe, you know, at least in the, in academia, you might have classes or other research or things that you're working on. Um, and you're not trying to, you know, become a master of running on HPC systems. You have you know, research and projects that you're working on. Uh, so, you know, it takes a little time to figure this out. Then they finally get their job submitted. Um, there are probably quite a few failures that take place in this in this area here in the submission. Um, and then get to the job execution, validating your job output. Um, and then download, move data or post-process on the system, you know, whatever it is you're doing there. Um, and then essentially, uh, uh, you know, hopefully you've completed all that work and then uh, log out at some point. So there was mention of on demand um, on here um, in, in his talk, uh, the open on demand interface where you have this nice web interface um, to use. But again, this is something where we get into this issue of you still have to, there's a lot of learning that's involved here. Um, even though it's a nice web interface to use, um, it's just a different system. Um, and you have to learn all these intricacies of using the um, on-demand system. Um, and a lot of the um, behind the scenes command line access that you're used to, you're just um, um, moved away from that and you just have this HTTP interface that you're working in. Um, but again, you have this, you know, fairly complex usage model again, where log on, try to get a good understanding of the system and storage configuration. Um, maybe there are not as many people to go and consult on this because it's not something that's that that's widely adopted, at least that I've seen. Um, there are a lot of still command line login um, 
um, at least like on our local systems and national lab systems that we use. Um, it's still mainly CLI utilization. Um, you'll have to upload your source code, um, get your data on the system, um, you know, depending on where you're getting your data from. Um, you may need to find out different ways to get it there because maybe before you were using, um, uh, you know, a repository that you were importing it from. So you have to figure all of that out. Um, profile and test your applications, um, figure out how to do your queue configuration um, and all of this to get the uh, resource manager, you know, working for you correctly, monitor your jobs, execute, um, and get your data off post-process, all these types of things again. Um, a, a usage model like this may or may not work um, uh, well for you. Uh, and it may be like this type of you know usage model on one system, but then you go to another system, maybe you're at Livermore and running on Summit and uh, uh, um, uh, on-demand won't be available there. Um, so there was also discussion about Jupyter. Um, Jupyter is kind of interesting. Um, uh, we use that in some of our classes that that we offer, and it's it's kind of nice. You can do a lot of console redirection through the command line and uh, run Jupyter from your laptop uh, directly. Um, or there's this open on demand, you know, Jupyter option, um, and it's just another way of doing it. But uh, again, there's still quite a few steps that are involved. Uh, with, with this usage model. So I like how they have this transformation here um, uh, on their slide deck. And uh, then there was the you know talk of fuzzball and all of this and cloud native and on-prem um, hybrid cases. And so this to me is something that, that, that I find quite interesting. I'm looking forward to the next talks to learn more about this um, because the, the usage model is just very nice here when you think about it. Um, log on, and maybe it's the same credentials that you use in a number of organizations that uh, will allow you to log on. So, so I'm looking forward to learning more about this part. Um, build the container if it doesn't exist. Um, so, so in here, um, this may be something where your administrators in, you know, in your uh, local institution or somebody is doing the container building. Um, or the software developers doing the container building. Um, and hopefully there are just a lot of containers that you're able to go and, and obtain um, and make it easier for you to go and get up and running. So grab all your containers, create your template uh, workflow uh, application, um, um, and then go and run your workflow um, and then do science. Uh, it, it looks easy in four easy steps. Um, um, I'm excited to find out how easy this really is to use. Um, and uh, so let's go and check in on the build here really quick. Let's see. Give me one second. Oh, uh, I got a message here from Paul. Paul's actually, uh, we have one person that's already done um, with his build. So that's that's kind of nice. Um, and I'm guessing that Paul chose Werewolf and not Werewolf 4. Um, let me just share my screen again here really quick. Oh, yeah, Paul actually did Werewolf 4. Um, let's see. One, two. Okay, there I have it shared correctly. Um, the reason why I was saying maybe Paul had chosen Werewolf 3 and not Werewolf 4 is that this is something that I didn't share, is that the build on Werewolf 4 takes quite a bit longer to go and complete uh, with the installation of all the one API um, tools at the end. Um, as you can see, my install is still running. Um, but if I was to stop or just uh, uh, 
cancel out of that tale I was doing there. Um, oh, see, my, my note hasn't, hasn't completed yet. Um, but uh, so the install is still running on mine. Um, let me go to um, one that's executing here. Um, all right, so so this one here, uh, we can see that this is a Werewolf 4 build, and we can see that the compute node is is up and running here. Um, and um, so let's see. Oh, oh, he yeah, he did uh, actually he did Werewolf. Three. So, so the Werewolf three install completes faster than Werewolf four. Has nothing to do with Werewolf. It has to do with our recipe and things that we included in it. Um, so, so we do have one person that's completed one build, um, and uh, we'll we'll see how the others progress with with those. Um, all right. So, um, Gabby, if, if you're there, do you think it would be possible to go and promote Paul to a panelist just so we can have some discussion about his experience with, with it? Sure thing. Howdy. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Hi, Paul. How are you doing today? Oh, good. How is everybody? Oh, good, good. I think you're from Georgia. Yeah, University of Georgia in Athens. Um, this was very, <clears throat> this was fun for me because I've been an HPC Linux cluster admin for about 20 years. Um, in fact, I, I've, I have never used Werewolf in prod, but I I played with it back back in the day, like yeah, 2003, 2004, looking at that and Beowulf. Um, and I've, I've used Rocks, Xcat. Uh, uh, I don't even remember what IBM had, NIM, uh, uh, provisioned many clusters over the years. Uh, and it's neat to see, you know, uh, how technology adapts to exploit the, the things that become possible. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I was, I was a rocks user for, for many, many years. Um, I think I started early 2000, maybe 2001, 2002, somewhere in there using rocks. Um, and, and I used that for quite a few years. Um, that's how I came to know uh, Greg Kurtzer over at Control IQ. Um, him and I had lots of spirited discussions over the years um, uh, about, uh, different cluster distributions. Um, and I finally transitioned over to OpenHPC um, just because that was a, a simple mechanism for me to go and um, get up and running and get all the werewolf uh, and other components um, running without a, a, a lot of a lot of effort. And for me, that's where OpenHPC really helps. Um, I think so, so what I've done now is I, I run these HPC for the rest of us talks every other Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, and on there, we just try to help people get familiar with OpenHPC through these two recipes um, and just show them how easy it is to get the cluster up and running. And, and as you can see here, um, th there's nothing special about that script. It's just some simple setup things. We've taken the example automated install from OpenHPC for Werewolf and uh, modified it slightly. And you can be up and running uh, as you found in like 20 minutes. Uh, we, you know, we could have done 100 compute nodes versus just one compute node and still been up, you know, very quickly. 
Um, you know, so it's, so it's that that part's nice. I've I've added the werewolf four instructions where we have to go and do a checkout of the werewolf R RPM and do a quick rebuild and stuff um, on that. Um, but there's the container based one too, and I I kind of like that where you're able to go and check out a container, um, you know, go and obtain that from GitHub um, and do the build of that, and then use that as your distribution mechanism. There are, there are a lot of cool things in Werewolf 4. And, and I'm looking forward to OpenHPC releasing that later later this year. Um, so, so on your system are at, at uh, University of Georgia, are, are you still using any rocks, any Werewolf, any OpenHPC? Um, we, we use XCAT uh, okay, okay. Uh, for deployment. Um, I, yeah, but I've been doing this for long enough. I remember when OpenHPC began, uh, and I was so, and I remain excited about it. We, in terms of using it, it didn't have the right version numbers or the right components of the stack when it started out. Well, so what I'm happy to see is not only the, the growing community momentum or momentum around OpenHPC, you know, the idea of let's, let's, let's standardize and conserve effort, um, but also in the, the all up and down what we're calling the stack, such that you, you, it's the, the hardware diversity that can be accommodated by just going to GitHub and getting your OpenHPC if you can use Rocky. Uh, it, it's easier than you, you don't have to worry anymore. Oh, which, which Infinity Band card do you have and all that kind of stuff, unlike back in the day. And I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. And there's, I, I, I like that you brought up that the word community um, because there's, that's something that's really building behind um, uh, OpenHPC is this community. There, there's actually some discussion on the list today that that was around um, um, software build mechanisms. So thinking, think about like SPAC and and Easy Build and moduled environments and and all of this. And I saw this one comment from somebody. They they um, were talking about oh. What's the you know um, the difference between using Easy Build and OpenHPC? Um, I don't know if you're following the OpenHPC uh, mailing list, but so so that was a discussion. There were some things. It started off with a talk about Open Foam, um, and then someone saying that oh they're going to try a container. Somebody else was mentioning they're doing their deployment of it with Easy Build, and this discussion is just like continuing to grow. Um, and uh, uh, just good interaction with people talking back and forth about um, uh, how they're deploying applications. But this comment about easy build and open HPC came up with a comparison of that. And it's it's kind of interesting that um, I, I just found that comment. So open HPC, I just look at that as like the repository and it's like you can take what you want from there and use it. One example is like with Jeff Layton. Um, he writes a lot of articles in Admin Magazine, and he was talking about the components that he uses from OpenHPC, and that's just to get Slurm running because it makes it easier for him. Um, and he's taken some of the things from our recipes and incorporated those into some of his builds that he has and his articles that he publishes on Admin Magazine um, on, on Werewolf 4. If you haven't seen his articles before, make sure you go to Admin Magazine and check those out. Very, very good and very well written. Um, but um, talking about Easy Build, Easy Build, SPAC, Moduled Environment, or just building from source, whatever it is you need, or containers, all of these systems are all part of OpenHPC. So you can just start with a framework and just build all the cards if you want you can use everything um and uh, uh it's just one helpful way to um do this oh link for the article um yeah so i have some links in my slide deck and i'll add them um to chat let's see give me one second I can say hopefully right that now. comes through all right. All right. So I added those links there in, in the chat of these articles I'm talking about. Um, so there are just some great articles that are that are there. Um, 
And uh, but for me, I found open HPC, especially these days, um, you know, with this discussion of community, we have a lot of um, organizations and companies that have come in that are starting to provide better and more support for it. Control IQ is one. Um, I noticed um, in the past month that they've um, taken uh, a, a greater leadership role, if you will, in um, open HPC to where they're, it looks like they're starting to validate their, their um, options and maybe um, provide some support for it. Um, um, so, so I'm interested to see where that goes, but I, I, I'd like to see the support in organizations that, that um, are part of open HPC. Um, it just helps to build the community, um, uh, but the community exists of people like us, just end users who are out there um, using these using these products and using these systems. Um, yeah, I routinely look at like the the RPM spec files that OHPC uses before. Oh, I'm doing this right now, this week, <laughs> uh, preparing Slurm for our next cluster. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Look for best practices as well. Like look at the mailing list and look at how did OpenHPC do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I do very similar things, and it just it helps me in in building and deploying these systems. Um, so it, it looks like everything is completed on these cluster builds. And I, I think everyone has, um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, it looks like there was one question here from uh, Sumit, I think is, is who is from here on loading a module. Um, I think in the, in the online instructions, there was, a, um, it doesn't include the ML singularity, module load singularity. Um, that's just a step that's not needed if you're doing um, the, the um, tutorial. We've added apptainer to go and resolve, uh, apptainer local install to go and resolve that, that issue. So there's an issue with the singularity open HPC module. Um, but, uh, these are pretty much the slides and, and portion I have on this. Um, so are there any, any questions about OpenHPC? Um, or, or other options here before we go and hand it off to um, Control IQ? Um, I see that we have a... Mark Moorcroft is uh, uh, on the line. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gabby, if, if it's possible, could you promote one other person, Mark Moorcroft, so, so he can join in here? And, and I, I had a, a few questions and discussion I'd want to have with him. Sure, he's been promoted. Okay, great, great. So some of these things I was talking about on the, the open HPC list, um, Mark was the one uh, who was uh, um, commenting on that. And he had, he had sent in the chat that, uh, that uh, he was indeed that person. Um, so Mark, you've, you've been, uh, you can go ahead and uh, talk now if, if you want. Um, yeah, so after going around in circles quite a bit, I ended up uh, using a container for open foam. And the only thing I don't know is, uh, you know, what MPI it's built with, the one we found, uh, or if it will fully meet the needs of my user. But um, the the actual build process was cake. I mean, it was very simple. Oh, that's good. And so I, I know there was like some conversation in that thread about like somebody who had one available. Is in the uh, is that the one you obtained or you just found a different one? There's a gigantic list of open foam builds in the Docker hub. Yeah, that's like it it open, I think it's open CFD or something or open foam. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. In the oh, in the uh repository name, it was like Op, I think open CFD slash open foam there, dash if, current. If you go, yeah, if you go to this, if you go to the open foam web page, uh, open CFD are the ones that maintain it. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, that's that's good to know. And it's also um, good to know that you were able to go and obtain that container and hopefully use it or it just functions. So that's that's good. Uh, right. I mean, to me, that shows promise, you know. Um, so what I'm looking to do is is grab that open phone container that that was available up there and uh, and give it a whirl on an open HPC system just to find out if it works like right out of the box. Um, so I, I can't inform the group on using open foam or test cases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have any idea how it works. Oh, um, okay. I was working with uh, one of our scientists mm -hmm. who knows how to use open foam, but doesn't know anything about uh, getting it built or uh, finding it. Right, so right. Between okay. the two of us, we put our heads together. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's where we bridge the gap. Um, yeah. I do have a question for you about, um, so the default MPI, it, I, this may be off topic for this portion of the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the default MPI for OpenHPC is uh, OpenMPI, which for quite a while now has been more or less broken. And mostly they recommend MVA pitch as an alternative. Um, and what's broken in OpenMPI is supposedly being fixed in the next version. They knew about it a version or two back, and no one has uh, prioritized it to be fixed. Something to do with PMIX. Uh, uh, so yeah, my I, question I on there, yeah, I think on there, you, um, if I recall correctly, there's like a PMIX dash OHPC package that then creates a module, and then you load that module. Well, I think the problem is it's currently broken yeah. and it, it's a known bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this may be a particular use case. I'm not, I don't remember, but I guess my question for you was, are you guys aware of that? And do you flip your default MPI to MVA pitch just to avoid these issues or am I uh, out of your wheelhouse? Um, <laughs> no, actually for our, for our default MPI, we use um, Intel. Um, so we, we take the- okay. MPI versions uh, from either the um, developer toolkit, if they're older, or one API. Um, yeah, my last cluster, we had Intel licensing. I don't have it on my current one. Oh, so just grab uh, the one API is free. Um, so you don't have to pay licensing on, on their compilers, packages, anything anymore. Really? Only for the support. Yep. That's the new name for like Composer and stuff, plus all their AI and analytics stuff too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't aware that change had happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been about a year, I think. Um, and not widely promoted either, which is kind of funny. Um, and uh, and you can do it all RPM based install. You just uh, add the repository and yeah, and... it's been open. H Intel's been in Open HPC for a long time. I just didn't have a paid license, so I didn't even look at it. Oh yeah, yeah. No longer required. So that's kind of great. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, oh, sure, I won't sure. Bore the group with any more. <laughs> oh no. I mean this. So this talk right now is is Open HPC, um, you know, and the and the cl cluster competition. So I I wanted this just to be a very informal kind of discussion on cluster distributions, you know, in in general. Um, let's see. So. Um, Oh, there was a question that came in. Uh, we are planning to build up an HPC cluster. Um, should we wait for Rocky Linux 9 and go ahead with Rocky Linux 8? Uh, will there be an upgrade script from Rocky 8 to Rocky 9? Um, I mean, I could, I can try to answer that 8 to 9 upgrade script. I've, I've never found moving from one um, release like a, a eight to nine, a major release. I've never really found anything like that to work um, or that that it's ever been supported. Usually like when I move from like seven to eight or, you know, whatever it may be, we just do a, a clean install and, and start off fresh. Um, we can always ask um, the Control IQ team in the talk following whether or not they're going to have any type of support for something like that my guess would probably be no um, i can talk about that a little bit yeah yeah here's jonathan thought. from control iq yeah hi everybody so um i to the original question i wouldn't recommend waiting for nine uh, i think um rocky eight and enterprise linux eight in general 
is is kind of the standard platform for an HPC system right now. You, uh, but there's no reason why you couldn't run Rocky 9 images on your compute nodes if you wanted to. And this might be a little bit more uncomfortable in um, uh, in a Werewolf 3 deployment, but certainly in a Werewolf 4 deployment, uh, you know, we've done that. Um, and a lot of the open HPC stuff is relatively isolatedly built. So there's a lot of it might just work. Uh, but even then, once, you know, once open HPC releases Rocky nine builds, you could just use those packages on your compute nodes and it wouldn't have to be the same thing that's on your head node. Uh, but as for an upgrade process, yeah, we, we right now don't have any plans for, uh, a, a straightforward eight to nine upgrade that you of course can uh do that depending on how um you know how complex your post install has gotten um but it's generally not recommended you'd be better off starting with a a second head node that you're deploying separately and then migrating nodes to that yeah and that's that's also an excellent point that that you made um Jonathan on the um having the rocky eight management um you know infrastructure if you will and then the ability to go and have a different version different operating system executing like having you know rocky nine i'm assuming you're saying uh by container you know um based install process right yeah in in uh in a in a werewolf three deployment it's a little bit more assumed that everything is kind of matching between the head node and the compute nodes uh, right. and the the images that get deployed on those compute nodes. But a lot of the work that's gone into Werewolf 4 has been simplifying the process of isolating those compute nodes and the building of that image so that uh, it continues to work even when there are different versions. You may run into trouble if you need features in the kernel on the compute image that aren't in the kernel on the head node when you're building the image. But I'm I'm pretty sure that we've done Rocky 9.1 compute images and you know we aren't running that way most of the time, but it hasn't been an issue. And we've set, certainly done older versions. I have a, a cluster uh, right now where we, uh, as a test and as part of a request, we built some CentOS 7 compute images while our head node was 8.6. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so there was a question that came in. Uh, sorry if I missed this. When will Werewolf 4 be available in OpenHPC? Um, from what I've seen on the OpenHPC lists, they said uh, you know, possibly this summer. Um, I don't know if you, do you have any um, insight into that, Jonathan? Uh, for an open HPC um, upgrade or, or update to Werewolf 4, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. So them yeah. in there, in there, like in the Rocky 8, um, whatever, open HPC 2.x version right now, there's, there's still Werewolf 3. There was some discussion about when it's moving to Werewolf 4. Um, yeah, I, I'm I mean, afraid I, know I, I don't know the timeline for it. Yeah, the yeah, packages yeah. are there. It's just a matter of getting the documentation upgraded. Yeah, And I think yeah. some of the concern is that Werewolf 4 is a purely uh, stateless provisioning system, whereas the uh, the Werewolf 3 uh, system provided stateful the deployments. And so they might be hoping to, to get that into uh, a guide as well. Oh, um, yeah. But I, I don't. I don't think that's likely to happen in time for, you know, a desire to publish it um, this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I can say that the process is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of getting it written down. And yeah. if anyone is uh, is interested in that, uh, they should reach out to to one of us over here at CIQ. We'd be happy to point them at some YouTube videos that we've already put out that show doing that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and also to the person that, that posted that question, um, the... Uh... I'll put this in chat here. Um, there's a recipe right there that you could have Werewolf 4 running um, on your Rocky 8 cluster with the latest version of OpenHPC that, yeah. that works. Um, and to just, just to the point of this question I'm seeing, Werewolf 4 is in OpenHPC. You can, it, both correct. Werewolf 3 and 4 are there. You can install yeah. either. It's just the documentation for OpenHPC, the, the installation recipe hasn't been updated for Werewolf 4, or, you know, there isn't a separate recipe for Werewolf 4 yet. Right, right. Yep, yep. 
Yeah, I'm gonna... looking forward to the public release of it. And, you know, we'll let somebody from OpenHPC, you know, make that announcement. Um, I got a related question about uh, OS versions. Um, sure. The whole federal government is up against a problem that CentOS will no longer be allowed in, I guess it's July. So we have entire data centers that are on CentOS 7 that have to be converted to either Rocky or Oracle or something, and this includes clusters. Uh, so I'm just curious how <laughs> popular a conversation would be in this group with what uh, people are doing about it, uh, how panicky are they, what are they doing, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Mo most education, uh, most universities don't care because they're, they're not being pushed to get rid of CentOS, but if you're in the federal space, it's got to be gone in a few months. Yeah, yeah. That's why we are starting to roll out a Rocky 8 dev cluster next week. <laughs> <laughs> we have CentOS 7 in our prod Linux cluster. Uh, we're state government, uh, higher ed, but uh, so we, we, we don't have the audit mandate sledgehammer that, that you know, the uh, federal do. Um, but what we're doing about it is uh, we're we're small enough and worried enough, and actually can make ourselves dedicate the time. Since we don't have a hard, our deadline is is hard to us, but self imposed. Thankfully, uh, we're saying we're we're doing as Steve mentioned. Uh, we're we're rolling out a new cluster uh, with Rocky Eight, assessing which app you know most highest priority apps go first for reporting. Uh, completely different you know apps and different user local, and just a hook. Hoping we get done well enough soon enough, but uh, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> having to chat otherwise, but that's that's over. In short, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And as a, as a state government entity, are you uh, concerned with uh, the fact that uh, Rocky doesn't have uh, FIPS certification? Does that matter to you guys? No, we um, our particular uh, we we are. We, we can be lax in that regard. Uh, oh, okay. we're, we're, we're just entering our, we don't have a centralized data governance uh, uh, panel or what have you, um, but in terms of data, which isn't exactly what you asked, but in terms of data itself, uh, the HPC shop are only soon going to offer kind of secure storage of data, but only for use in the HPC cluster, not University Central. Um, so we are prepared to sustain an audit for that once we claim compliance with that for that small subset of data. Uh, we might isolate, you know, where where physically isolate where that data travels, but still different from what you were talking about. Yep. Yeah, I didn't want to send us down a rabbit hole. I just <laughs> was curious how much uh, this group is interested in those types of topics. Yeah. So I mean, those are good things to bring to the um, HPC for the rest of us. You know, session we host every every two weeks. Um, you know, those primarily okay. just like admins and uh you know people doing run running systems um we always do a little tutorial on open hpc i'm thinking of including some new things uh you know maybe open foam whatever else it may be um so i'll just finish up here quickly uh uh we had the first one here of course the conference uh we have hpc cluster classes coming spring 2023 um they'll they'll carry continuing education units uh, and be part of a certificate program. Those would be open to everyone. Um, they're fee-based, of course, um, very low fee um, in case you happen to have, um, um, you know, some type of program in your university or organization to go and cover, you know, CEUs. Um, and then we have a class we offer in the summer in the introduction to building high-performance computing systems. Of course, you need to be a matriculated student either at the university or summer session for that. Um, you can visit our website to find out details on that. The HPC for the rest of us sessions are every other Thursday, 11 a.m. I forgot to include the time there, but you can go to meetup.com slash HP, HPC clusters. Um, and that's a very informal gathering um, there. Um, and then there's the links that we have that I posted in chat. And with that, um, it's 11 o'clock and I'm finished with my presentation here and an informal talk on OpenHPC. Um, so thanks a lot.